Okay, can you um, introduce yourself? How's it going? My name is uh, Danny, aka Bobby Boucher, the water boy. Okay, everybody, uh, Danny's right here, right in front of the um, right in front of the Washington Monument, and he sells um, he sells all kinds of drinks. He's doing huge volume here. I've been with him for like just a couple minutes talking, and he um, he had a great he has a great story really, um, and a really kind of powerful insight about. Um, business and especially his business as an entrepreneurial person uh, working out here on the on the monument and uh, how things have changed from uh, the pandemic and, and through the pandemic um, so Danny we were talking about you know everything from your perspective um, through the through the basically from the beginning of the pandemic until until now and how it's affected your business would you uh, you know could you kind of take the viewers through that again yeah, so um, basically, when COVID hit, I mean, don't get me wrong, we all suffered, but uh, I do, suffered. Do your thing, man. We'll get. We'll I get suffered. Too. I suffered a little bit less than uh, most people, but I definitely did feel, you know, feel the, the squeeze, as it were, because I guess you could say that my business is, you know, related to tourism, because the more people vacation, the more people who come here to see the sites, and that's the more more potential buyers for my drinks right mm. and I, when I first started I was the last year of Obama's uh, presidency just to give you an idea how long I've been doing this and uh, you know it was great I, I was selling my drinks for my waters for a dollar Gatorades for two bucks uh, somehow by book or by crook I would always leave out of here with at least 250 if not 300 350 dollars mm. um, since the pandemic less people have been coming and out of the people who do a lot of them are barely affording to be even be able to come out here just everybody is a little bit tighter than before so what i had to do was in turn raise my prices unfortunately because when i was selling them for a dollar it was just so many hundreds of people in the day walking by me so when as it was less people i realized that yeah the, there's less people but the few people who are coming and buying are willing to spend a little bit more than a dollar so I, I you know had to adjust accordingly uh, it's, it's still a volume business but definitely not a sheer volume business like it was you know you want to try to squeeze a little more out of each customer you know what I mean try, instead of two bucks for Gatorade I'm charging three and often enough people are generous and they tip a dollar or so mm. you know so that that's kind of like helped to I guess balance out yeah you know, Lack of yeah, well, I don't think anybody's gonna hold it against you. And, you know, the costs of costs for businesses are through the roof. Costs for everyone are through the roof. So, you know, no one's gonna have, no one's no one's gonna feel bad about that at all. And and, and uh, Danny, you were saying you you've been here through you've been here since you know Ob Obama's administration, yeah, very end of it. the very end of it. So a long time. And you you and I were talking about you know you you had some pretty interesting things to say about um, you know what you saw here. Especially recently, like with with January six and everything, can you can you kind of talk about that? Oh, I just was saying that you know I was here working on January six. I mean, I, I wasn't at the Capitol itself, but I was kind of at the halfway point during the march, and uh, basically I was just telling, I was just saying that. One water. Oh yeah. A cool one. Okay. You don't want a hot one? Ah no no no, cool one, cold one. Thank you. No problem. Cold water. Anyway. Yeah. So, um, basically on January 6th, I was just saying that, you know, don't get me wrong, you know, it was, they were definitely a mob, you know, I mean, it was a mob mentality, very much like what I pictured at the end of Frankenstein minus the torches, you know what I mean? <laughs> but what I was saying is that, like, I mean, I'm clearly not a proto, you know, your, your stereotype of a Trump supporter. They knew I wasn't with them. They, they knew I was selling drinks, but wasn't like any of them tried to you know beat me up or even get mad at me mm. we even i even was uh talking politics with a few of them you know i mean very uh you know we disagreed very widely but mm. that said like we were able to do it respectfully mm. and so you know it kind of gave me I, I was just saying that you know they kind of gives you hope right they're, yeah their politics are terrible but the people themselves are, are usually pretty pretty decent yeah yeah no that's a good point i think you see that um in a lot of places i think probably um probably the media has a lot to do with that with sensationalizing the
kind of gap between uh, everybody, you know, us and them. It's us and them mentality. So, so I'm not there's surprised. There's no, no money to be made in, uh, in everybody holding hands and singing Kumbaya. That's right. There's a lot more money to be made in. Pitting you against me yeah, and me exactly. against you. and Smart, Exactly. There you go. <laughs> but at the end of the day, right, like you said, uh, you can get along with everybody, man. Even even though your politics is so widely different, right? You, those yeah. guys are, I mean, I wouldn't agree with a lot of their takes, but I, I bet those people and I could talk and get on and, and that's what, exactly what you're saying yeah so I think that's a great thing um, and I miss that in this country I mean not to, sorry not to cut you off but no, no, you know I mean I feel like I mean I grew up in the 90s and I feel like even then you know like the furthest lefty could talk to a, a pretty hard writer mm. without you know it just devolving into chaos mm. and, and mm. now that's really not even within the left you know what I mean? It's it's so much infighting, and and also on the right, you, mm. know, you know, you see what they're doing to McCarthy. Uh, I couldn't happen to a nicer guy, but you know, it's still pretty like insane. Like, why oh, are you yes. trying to like get out your own? You know, because he's not far enough right for you, or whatever. I don't know. No, yeah, that's inter that's an interesting take uh, about McCarthy and the infighting, and uh, you know what I mean. And probably the, um, I guess the the degree of just disagreement overall, whether it's infighting or it's between you know, factions, right and left, or Republican and Democrat, it has gotten a lot worse, I yeah. think. And that's kind of one of the things that I'm out here also trying to get at too, right? I'm, I'm out here trying to ask the question, which I already asked you uh, before, which is, you know, just trying to put a number on how people on a one to 10 scale feel about the economy. But then on a one to, the other question I'm trying to answer is on a one to, one to 10 scale, how do people feel about the direction of America at the time. Do you have anything to say about, you know, could you, could you put numbers to either of those? So for the economy, 110, I'd say right now we're probably, I don't know, maybe a three. Okay. I mean, I don't want to, you know, I wouldn't say it's so bad as a one. Uh, unemployment is low, but most of the jobs ain't really worth doing, if I'm being honest. Um, I mean, in DC alone, you know, like if you worked at minimum wage 40 hours a week, you would only be able to pay your rent right. and, your, and your food. Like you would have no money to like for anything. You know what I mean? I know you're, you're absolutely right. So I was up, you know, that way. At the at the end, other end up there is the is the Capitol, right? There's, yeah. Uh, at the entrance, there's all of, there's obviously Capitol Police all over the place. But I was talking to a, one of the Capitol policemen up there. This was like two weeks ago, and she was telling me that you know she gets cost of living increases because she's a she's a federal employee of course but she was like i'm still falling farther behind every you know every week and i was like i was asking her the question you know what's what's been the biggest expense that you've kind of had to eat through inflation and she was you know and this is this is what everybody's saying it's it's yeah, uh, gross sure. groceries yeah. groceries and then gas and then groceries uh, are insane it was just insane now and yeah. so she was telling me and you can you'll be, probably be able to talk about this but she was saying she's now spending between 150 to 200 every week you know what I'm saying? and i was like where are you eating are you eating over at like uh like what's, what's whole foods yeah whole foods i asked her like that area. like whole, no, are you going to whole really. foods she's like no i'm just going to like yeah, harris teeter or yeah. the giant or whatever and i was like wow Cold yeah, water, no, two bucks? no joke so and you know i mean by the way, I mean, you know, not to, I don't eat McDonald's anymore, but like when I was a kid, I remember I used to be able to get a, a McDonald's meal for like three, four bucks. Yeah. Not a happy meal, like a, a, no, full know, meal. a number three, yeah, type of thing. So and now, you know, McDonald's is, let's be honest, like as expensive as everybody else. Yeah. And you know what I mean? Like you spend like 12 bucks, which is like oh, what yeah. you would spend at a Chipotle or something. So oh, yeah. Chipotle. Like it's no longer like, but the, the reason I bring it up, you know, gas was, used to be like just over a dollar. And as we, as these things are doubling and tripling in price, our salary is not doubling and tripling. Mm, you mm. know what I mean? Like it's, it, it's just not, it, it's just not as easy to to get through the day as right. it was in the 70s and I believe you're 80s right. and 90s. You know I what believe I mean? everybody feels that way. And yeah. like you, like you were saying, um, you know, you were saying, Danny, basically you're working. You know, you had to increase your your margin, right? You, right. You're, you're working less on volume and more on margin now. Right. And that's, I think that's what a lot of businesses would say. Um, right. Do you feel like, even though you've had to do that, do you, you feel like you has that made up the difference, or you feel like you're uh, falling, falling behind? I have fallen behind, like 
I'll put it like this. Like I used to go out here and work, you know, I mean, I guess, you know, when you consider the hours put in, uh, I would work about six hours and make a, but I would leave here with like 300, mm. no less than 250. Like these last few summers, like 250 is, is a very, very good day. It's mm. not common. Mm. You see what I'm saying? So mm. like my run of the mill pre pandemic, even as I increase it, it's, I've almost made up for it, but not quite, not honestly. Mm. No. Mm. Like I,